Section One of Poetry: A Magazine of Verse, Volume Eighteen, edited by Harriet Monroe. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Age and Youth by Lee Wilson Dodd. How little wisdom and how many years! How little wisdom and how much of pain! And now the slack knees tremble, the eye blares and mistress blur the mirror of the brain and memory in her niche with fumbling fingers plucks at old dreams mislaid which crumble soon and there's naught she touches now that lingers and her lamp smokes and dims a clouded moon and youth a long way off looks sidewise over into the place of shadow and stops singing the immemorial lay of love's true lover while for a space Hope's hand grows tired of clinging to his limp hand and troops careless and cold along the grass, and even youth seems old. And even youth seems old? But youth is old, old as the springtide, as the April flowers. Youth's infinite history is a tale thrice told, aeons but mask them in youth's counted hours. That rose bud and the dew upon that rose, like but the memory of all ages past. The wavering snowflake knows not, but God knows, the winters it has lasted and shall last. Yes, youth is old, and age is ever young. A new thing in its season, a new thing. New and more terrible than ever tongue of fool or poet has dared to say or sing. Yet not more terrible than youth, that seems a dreamer's dream of some dead dreamer's dreams. End of section 1 Recording by Jule Niedermeyer, Vienna Section 2 of Poetry, a Magazine of Verse, Volume 18 Edited by Harriet Monroe This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org Recording by Matt Perard The Mountain Graveyard by du bos hayward high on the mountain where the storm heads are lying where all may see there is a place as hideous and shocking as a scar that mars the beauty of a well-loved face infinitely drear and raw and nude it waits and listens in the solitude there is no friendly tree in all that square of scattered stones and arid troubled clay bleak as the creed of those who journey there hard as the code by which they live their day it gives them all they ask of it its best and no softness only rest but oh the pity of it all is this they lived with beauty and their eyes were blind dreaming of far strong joys they came to miss those that were near so at the last we find no tenderness of blossom, but instead mute emblems of the longings of the dead. These rain-bleached seashells in an ordered row tell of an ocean that they never knew, except in dreams which, through the ebb and flow of years, set seaward as the torrents do. Always they plan to follow, knowing deep within their hearts the dreams are but for sleep. And see, these tawdry bits of broken glass, which speak the foreign glories of the town, the crowds, the lights, these too are dreams that pass, here where the hemming walls of rock look down, and clasp their children fast within their keep, until they cradle them at last to sleep. Yet all the while, if they could only know the beauty that is theirs to breathe and touch, the whisper of the dawn across the snow, the vast, low-drifting clouds that love them much, oh, they could call their dreams home down the sky and carry beauty with them when they die. End of Section 2 Section 3 of Poetry, a Magazine of Verse, Volume 18, edited by Harriet Monroe. This is a LibriVox recording. 
All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Three Sonnets by Arthur Davison Fick Perspective of Coordination the circles never fully round but change in spiral gropings not as on a wall flat patterned but back into space they fall in depth on depth of indeterminate range where they begin may be here at my hand or there far lost beyond the search of eye and though i sit desperately wrapped and try to trace round round the line and understand the sequence the relation the black art of their continuance hoping to find good at least some logic of part joined to part i judge the task one of too mad a mood and prophecy throws its shadow on my heart and time's last sunset flames along my blood world beyond world two mirrors face to face is all i need to build a mazy universe for my mind where world grows out of world i dizzily find solace in endless planes that there recede the fifth plane world soft shimmering through the glass surely it has a light more bland than ours and in the far ninth hides a whirl of powers unknown to our dull senses I would pass down the long vista, pausing now and then, to taste the flavor of each separate sphere, and with each vast perspective cool my eye. Whom should I meet there? Never living men. What should I love there? Nothing I hold dear. What would the end be? Endless as am I. LEAF MOVEMENT From its thin branch high in the autumn wind, the yellow leaf now sails in upward flight, hovers at top slope, then a whirling bright eddy of motion sinks. The storm behind, with gusts and veering tyrannies, would uphold even as it downward beats this gorgeous thing, which like an angel's lost and shattered wing against the grey sky sweeps its broken gold. Another eddy, desperate or in mirth, brings it to rest here on the crackled earth, where men can see it better than on the bough. What quite preposterous irony of wind's will touches it where it lies, golden and still, and once more lifts it vainly heavenward now. End of section three. Recording by Cynthia Moyer. Section four of Poetry, a magazine of verse, volume eighteen, edited by Harriet Monroe. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Matt Perard. Beauty in Fourth Street by David Osborne Hamilton. One. It was not strange that beauty found our path in June and eagerly thrust up the gay flowers through the ground and put a bird on every tree. But strange it was when skies were gray that beauty followed where we led and sat beside our stove all day and lay at night upon our bed two i live with beauty and across the way i see a shabby park where women sit and scold the dirty children from their play while old men shift their wrinkled legs and spit so close to me these dusty lives go past shall i cry out how beauty came to me o oh, futile lips be still o oh, heart close fast break not with joy lest you set beauty free end of section four
Section five of Poetry A Magazine of Verse, Volume eighteen, edited by Harriet Monroe. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Repetitions by Hazel Hall. I plunge at the rearing hours life is a steed of pride who so high above me towers i cannot mount and ride to sewing the wind is sewing with needles of rain with shining needles of rain it stitches into the thin cloth of earth in 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 oh the wind has often sewed with me one, two, three. Spring must have fine things to wear like other springs. Of silken green the grass must be embroidered, one and two and three. Then every crocus must be made so subtly as to seem afraid of lifting color from the ground, and after crocuses the round heads of tulips, and all the fair intricate garb that spring will wear, the wind must sew with needles of rain, with shining needles of rain, stitching into the thin cloth of earth, in, 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 for all the springs of futurity, one, two, three. Instruction my hands that guide a needle in their turn are led relentlessly and deftly as a needle leads a thread other hands are teaching my needle when i sew i feel the cool thin fingers of hands i do not know they urge my needle onward they smooth my seams until the worry of my stitches smothers in their skill all the tired women who sewed their lives away, speak in my deft fingers as I sew today. Three Songs for Sewing One A fiber of rain on a window pane talked to a stitching thread. In the heaviest weather I hold together the weight of a cloud. To the fiber of rain on a window pane, the talkative stitches said, I hold together with the weight of a feather the heaviest shroud. 2. My needle says, Don't be young, holding visions in your eyes, tasting laughter on your tongue, be very old and very wise, and sew a good seam up and down in white cloth, red cloth, blue and brown. My needle says, what is youth but eyes drunken with the sun, seeing farther than the truth, lips that call, hands that shun the many seams they have to do in white cloth, red cloth, brown and blue. 3. One by one, one by one, stitches of the hours run through the fine seams of the day, till like a garment it is done and laid away. One by one the days go by, and suns climb up and down the sky. One by one their seams are run, as time's untiring fingers ply, and life is done. Cowardice Discomfort sweeps my quiet, as a wind leaps at trees and leaves them cold and thinned, not that I fear again the mastery of winds, for holding my indifference, dear, I do not feel illusions stripped from me. And yet this is a fear, a fear of old discarded fears, of days that cried out at irrevocable ways. I cower for my own old cowardice, for hours that beat upon the wind's broad breast with hands as impotent as leaves are, this robs my new hour of rest i thought my pride had covered long ago all the old scars like broken twigs in snow i thought to luxuriate in rich decay as some far-seeing tree upon a hill but startled into shame for an old day 
I find that I am but a coward still. Flash I am less of myself and more of the sun. The beat of life is wearing me to an incomplete oblivion, yet not to the certain dignity of death they cannot even die who have not lived. The hungry jaws of space snap at my unlearned eye, and time tears in my flesh like claws. If I am not life's, if I am not death's, out of chaos I must re-reap the burden of untasted breaths. Who has not waked may not yet sleep. End of section 5 Recording by Cynthia Moyer Section 6 of Poetry, a Magazine of Verse, Volume 18, edited by Harriet Monroe. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Leonard Wilson. Dingy Street by Marjorie Allen Seifert It is twilight by the dreary edge of town, and the December air is harsh and bitter. All the trees are bare, the leaves are scattered and trodden down to pulp, and every house is brown. There is no trace of beauty anywhere. Night comes slowly, the houses hide in the gloom, but toward the muddy street, one by one, their shabby windows bloom like golden flowers to shine and greet the bundled effigies on sodden feet, trudging toward welcome in the hidden room. There is a magic in it. There, once more, body and spirit, they are warmed and fed. There, as a thousand times before, the ancient feast is spread, the simple miracles of love and bread. They stumble into beauty at the door. End of section six. Recording by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. Section 7 of Poetry, a Magazine of Verse, Volume 18, edited by Harriet Monroe. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Leonard Wilson. So It Befell by Ida Lou Walton. When the day is long and full of pain, I remember a certain little lane where every night at half past seven the train flashed by on its way to heaven. There, you and I, watching in the lane, dreamed of riding inside the train away from the wide sun-flowered plain and tall fields of high rolling grain. When night is long and strangely sane, I remember a certain little lane where on one night, so it befell, the train passed heaven on its way to hell. End of section 7. Recording by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. Section 8 of Poetry, a Magazine of Verse, Volume 18. Edited by Harriet Monroe. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Carol de Rose. Silver Filigree by Eleanor Wiley. 
The icicles wreathing on trees in festoon swing, swayed to our breathing. They're made of the moon. She's a pale waxen taper, and these seem to drip transparent as paper from the flame of her tip. Molten, smoking a little, into crystal they pass, falling, freezing to brittle and delicate glass, each a sharp-pointed flower, each a brief stalactite which hangs for an hour in the blue cave of night. End of section 8. Recording by Carol DeRose. Section 9 of Poetry, a magazine of verse, volume 18. Edited by Harriet Monroe. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Carol DeRose. The Heart Knoweth Its Own Bitterness by Aline Kilmer. The heart knoweth. If this be true indeed, then the thing that I bear in my bosom is not a heart, for it knows no more than a hollow whispering reed that answers to every wind. I am sick of the thing. I think we had better part. My heart would come to any piper's calling, a fool in motley that dances for any king. But my body knows and its tears unbidden falling say that my heart has sinned. You would have my heart? You may. I am sick of the thing. End of section 9. Recording by Carol DeRose. Section 10 of Poetry, a Magazine of Verse, Volume 18. Edited by Harriet Monroe. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Ratan Deep Satwant Singh. The Riddle by Lee Wilson Dodd. You want to be free. Would you be free? If you were free, is the wind free, or the wind-worn sea, or sun-tide earth, or the earth-tide moon? Is Ariel, is Caliban, is Satan in hell, or God in heaven? Riddle my rune, little man. End of section 10《ポエトリー・ア・マガジン・ a Magazine of Verse, Volume 18, Edited by Harriet Monroe. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Ratan Deep Satwant Singh. Song by H. Thompson Rich. Hills are all a flower, skies are all a fire. Fool was I to sorrow for a dead desire. Lo, the April marvel stirs the earth again. Break my heart of beauty that would not break of pain. End of section 11. Section 12 of Poetry, a Magazine of Verse, Volume 18, edited by Harriet Monroe. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Libby Gone. Charmian Song by Aline Kilmer. I'm glad I have but a little heart, for my heart is very small. It makes it free to come and go, and no one cares at all. I give my heart for a tender look, for a gentle word or touch, and the one who has it never knows, and it does not hurt me much. If my heart were great and I gave it away, then all the world would see. But my heart is only a little thing, and it does not trouble me. I may give my little heart unseen, it is so small and light, 
and only very wakeful things can hear it cry at night. End of section 12section thirteen of poetry a magazine of verse volume eighteen edited by harriet monroe this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by libby gone to an authentic priest by edward townsend booth he weighs me down this christ of yours he weighs me down his arm is on my elbow in the streaked dawn oppresses he my evening hours still he outshines the manifold bright rays that centre in my heart much loveliness i knew grows cold the while his threatening fires start to gnaw at this old edifice of sturdy lusts outsavors he the savour of my ancient bliss he tempts me to apostasy end of section thirteen Section number 14 of Poetry, a Magazine of Verse, Volume 18, edited by Harriet Monroe. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Charlotte Durkett. Youth and Age by Elizabeth Hart Pennell. Youth has music on his lips and in his hurrying feet, rhythm in his fingertips and in his laughter sweet age has silence on his tongue never a note or sound but his hat is often rung with music all around youth has tongue but lacks an ear he whistles pipes and sings age is still but he can hear silence and growing things end of section fourteen section number fifteen of poetry a magazine of verse volume eighteen Edited by Harriet Monroe. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Charlotte Durkett. Poet at Nightfall by Glenway Westcott from Still Hunt. I see no equivalent for what which I see among words. That sounds are nowhere repeated, vowel or vocal wind or shaking leaf. Ah me, beauty does not enclose life, but blows through it, like that idea, the wind, which is unseen and useless, even superseding upon the scarred sea, which goes and comes, altering every aspect, the poplar, the splashing crest, altering all in that moment, when it is not, because we see it not, but who would hang like a wind bell on the porch where no wind ever blows. End of section 15. End of poetry, a magazine of verse, volume 18, edited by Harriet Monroe.